You're listening to The Human Upgrade with Dave Asprey. Formerly Bulletproof Radio. A state of high performance. This is a live in-person interview at the Biohacking Conference. This is my seventh annual conference in nine years, uh, thanks pandemic. And it's looking to be our best conference ever. And that means that some really interesting people are in the same building as me because they're speaking or exhibiting at the show. And I'm taking advantage of this opportunity to do in-person interviews where there's always a different energy than what you can do when you're remote. And today's guest has explored shamanism, past life regression, yoga, meditation, energy fields. Oh, and was a VP at T-Mobile and has a very successful career working in the wireless industry, in the blockchain industry. So this is one of those times we get to pick the brain of someone who has been very successful in kind of the main world in a similar way to what I did, but is willing to talk about all of the mystical stuff, the energy stuff that many successful people do or know about or have gifts in, but don't talk about. And part of the cool thing with biohacking is when we have the data, we start seeing that there are things that we don't talk about or things that we didn't know about. And I think you're gonna find some fascinating stuff here because we're gonna go into the quantum realm. And don't worry, I won't misuse the word. Now, if I haven't already piqued your interest, well, our guest, Philip, is from Germany and his full name is Philip von Holzendorf Failing. And I said that perfectly, did I not, Philip? Absolutely, (laughs) yeah. You, in in your story, and we were talking uh, before the show, you said, look, you started seeing energy fields. (laughs) <laughs> so, did you call a psychiatrist when this happened? Uh, actually, no. Okay. <laughs> and <clears throat> so the the story really was that I was already in in my corporate career. I had worked for small, medium, and, and large giant companies. But in the early two thousands, really, that happened that yeah. that I started to become really interested in what's really behind everything. So I started to dive into that with a classic kind of like yoga, meditation kind of stuff, and then I met my wife in 2005, and my wife was actually born with the ability to see aura and see things that are that we would call the unseen, mm-hmm. right? And she never lost that connection. And wow. yeah, and and so that catapulted me a little bit more into this this other world, right? Uh, if you will, so understanding that there's even more than I had thought that there is already more, but then I realized, wow, this world I had no idea about and I started to explore that even more and I went to through shamanic workshops and learned how to do past life regression work with people and and all that kind of stuff and become really interested in it. It was also frustrating in between because I was one of these guys that had really lost this total connection like five years prior to that or ten years prior to that you would have found me completely cut off from my feelings and emotions Mm -hmm. I would just work fully from my brain and and that was my world, right? And everything else I didn't access anymore. So it was hard for me to work through all those blockages and get through that. But I did and I, and I was successful ultimately to work through these things and then I started to also see these things that I wouldn't see for years. My wife would see, notice these things and I didn't and I was I, I got frustrated about it. But that all changed at some point. And, I think, you know, I take it in a way as something where I went through something that a lot of people go through, right? We, you know, most of us have forgotten who we are. And right now is actually a huge shift for whole humanity right now where people are waking up to, wow, I have this inner force, this inner power um, that's within me that's so much greater than just this physical self that we identify with. And having gone through that, I think, gives me a pretty broad perspective. And that's also one of the reasons why I came up with these products, because they sort of bridge the gaps of these things and they help accelerate and help support our system as a whole, not just the physical system, but also the energy system um, on our way to where we're headed, which is basically our, our completeness. There's a lot in there uh, to unpack, but you intentionally learn to see these. And how do you know that your wife isn't just crazy? (laughs) 
It's a, it's a really good. She's listening, by the way. It's 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 <laughs> it's, a, it's a it's a really good question. So, y you see that by results, right? Yeah. Uh, so that's that's basically what it is. You know, you can you can even do scientific testing on some of these things. But if you if anyone has a session with my wife and truly wants to know about some of the deeper issues that you know that you're struggling with in your life go to her she's never seen you before she, you talk to her and after that hour you'll be like wow she totally got me she she understands who i am she understands my problem and, and she can even see what i need to do to change it and 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 that's basically the proof uh, that happens over and over again <laughs> and, and the difference between a crazy person who we've all seen you know, standing on street corners with mental illness and all is that there is no correlation with what they're saying uh, to usefulness or reality. I have dozens and dozens of, of friends uh, and, and people I know who have those same kinds of abilities. In fact, I get to look at some of their brains uh, at 40 years of Zen and they're different brains. In fact, you can predict from brainwaves whether someone is more likely to do that or not. Uh, and what convinced the skeptic in me, because we have a similar story. You know, I was working in big corporate America, and I did a lot of the personal development and energy work and yoga and, and some similar stuff. Uh, but when you talk to, say, two different shamanic practitioners, and they don't know each other, you've shared no information with them, and they both look at you and say exactly the same thing that is so bizarre that it could not be random. Like, you know, I see exactly something that looks exactly this way. That's weird. And it's stuck here in your aura. And you're going, when the first person says, it, yeah, right, uh-huh, right? And how much was our session? You know, that everyone has a skeptic in them, although that's pretty much disrespectful. I mean, yeah, they're a con artist, but they're easy to spot after you've seen a few of them. Uh, but then when you see two, or in a few cases, three different people who don't know each other, who haven't been cued with anything, all see the same thing, you have to say there's something going on here, or you have to be one of those, I'm a scientist with a capital S, which means I have a religion. It means I follow dogma. That can't be, therefore it isn't. One of the most famous things happening right now with our scientific cancel culture, well, <laughs> curious people are like, it doesn't seem very likely, but show me your evidence. And yeah. it's interesting. And here the evidence is, you've seen her have success in a way she shouldn't. Uh, so... I'm going to say, all right, you, you've checked off the box that says you've done the work it takes to be able to do what you say you can do, uh, and uh, that you've worked, you're working now on your company, Leela Q-Tech, that's building technology, and I'm putting words in your mouth now, that actually you can see changes in energy with it, or your wife does that. How are you correlating the cool energy devices you make with the states you talk about? Like, walk me through that. Yeah, so, so first of all, we work with a whole network of healers together, okay. healer practitioners, and one of them is my wife, but we have several others, and I want to mention one who's, who's extremely special. Uh, he's called Roman Hafner. Mm -hmm. He's probably, they call him the Wunderkind in Europe, and in Europe he's, he's probably the most known healer that, that is there. Already when he was 11, he was on stage helping 300 people, telling them their life problems, telling them when they had cancer or something like that. Um, because he was born with the ability to see all energy fields and all frequencies. And he didn't have this physical seeing, like you would see a glass as the matter and I would see that way. He didn't see that way. He only saw the vibration, the frequencies, the, the heat and everything. And like Neo in the Matrix seeing zeros and ones? In a relatively <laughs> similar way, so I, the way I describe it is, so if you go to, in, to your living room and then someone tells you, okay, there's this white candle, can you please walk to that candle, pick it up and take it into the kitchen? It's very easy for you to do. Now, uh, if I told you, okay, so in this whole room of frequencies, there's a vitamin C frequency, can you see that and, and pick it out and isolate and put it somewhere else? You couldn't do it, I would assume, and I couldn't do that either. Um, but he already, as an 11-year-old, could exactly do that because for him it's like this living room, like all the matter, you can see all the frequencies, so you can, he can uh, isolate those frequencies, manipulate those frequencies, and that's why doctors hired him to actually, with patients they didn't know what to do with, they called them in to basically tell them what these people have and then they started treating them. So yeah. that person we have basically as part of that healer network and we develop those products first, basically, uh, with the ability of, of these healers. 
to create the frequencies that, for example, promote inner peace or promote inner abundance or create the DNA and cell protector, which is also frequency we have. And then we test it with them. And then we go further and go into the real testing and into scientific testing. So that's the cadence, basically. Uh, so we create something until we know, okay, it's, it's basically ideal, but then we want to validate it. And from the very beginning, we started to do these scientific tests and studies because that's, I'm coming from both of those worlds, right? I could say, okay, well, you know, I know it works. All the healers know it works. The people have great results. Just leave it at that. But I think it's broader than that. There's so many people that may want to enjoy support like that, and they don't understand it. Um, and for them, you need to, you know, provide something for the brain to read through it. And that's what we've done. Whether it's dark field microscopy, we had the BESA Institute in Europe, which is the largest um, biofeedback and biosystem analysis testing institute in, in Europe. So they measure like the voltage in the cells and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Uh, the EGIF Institute in Europe, it's the largest EMF research institute in Europe. They tested our products and and we've been doing even more. So we're working really on a lot of studies right now. And, and we're a small company. We're privately funded and um, we want to keep it that way. So we don't have a multi-billion dollar budget to do these huge studies. So what's interesting is that things come up through our community. They find out new things that they were able to achieve with the products um, and or doctors. And then we heard about the Lyme disease, for example. Multiple Lyme disease patients would call us and reach out to us and say, hey, we've, we've gotten amazing results. All the fatigue is gone. I feel like I'm in life again. And it's, it's just so amazing. We heard that over and over again. We were like, okay, that's great feedback, fantastic. But now that we've heard it so much, let's just facilitate a whole study. So now we're actually working on a, on a full blown study here in the US uh, for chronic Lyme disease patients run by several doctors. Same happened with autistic kids. So actually several doctors in India that work with autistic kids found out that the products help, help the kids to start speaking again, help them to have a much calmer and, and better life in a way. And it happened, so they tested it, so they would just treat the kids on a Monday, for example, and the kids wouldn't know. And, and then suddenly Mondays were their best days and they had a whole team of people just checking the boxes. Wow. And now they're running a whole study and it was really them coming to us, not us going to them. And we, we also couldn't have done it and funded it even. So it's a real clinical study actually in India. It, yeah. It's interesting because as a biohacker, it's okay to say, look, the body is a black box. It was, I don't know what's going on inside a black box. In fact, we don't know what's going on inside our bodies, the vast majority of it. We know more than we used to, but there's so much we don't know. So if I do this, and this comes out way more often than it normally does, then I have something that works if it does that reliably. Now, Western reductionist thinking has two beliefs that are false. One is that there's only one thing that causes it. And, and this is just a stupid thing, but we believe it. And the prime example there, bread. I baked the water, I baked the flour, I baked the yeast. All single variables, therefore there's no bread. Right? You have to do all three or it doesn't work. And so one belief is it's, it's single variable. And the other one is that if I don't know the cause, it can't work. And this is a, a rampant thing in scientists. And that is completely false. And what I like to say for people like that is, oh, you need to know the cause for it to work? Leprechauns. There. Now you have a cause. And of course, they become outraged. But the point here is, if I do this, and this comes out, your job is to eventually find the cause. But for this to cause this, you don't need to know a mechanism. It's not necessary. But we will, we will discover that. But the first observation, right, is do this, do that. And so what you're hearing is people, hurt, they saw the observation, you probably don't know how this is affecting any of the conditions like Lyme disease or autism, which have some surprising correlations and similarities we can talk about if we get into that. Do you know why the Lila Tech stuff is changing something? Like, what's it doing? So we know it, frankly, and that's uh, due to the ability to actually see it. Mm -hmm. um, and Roman, for example, could describe 
to you exactly like why it helps with Lyme because he's, he says that you know the the high vibration basically of of this block for example is something that the limes can't withstand and that has nothing it's just a such a healthy vibratory environment that they just can't withstand it now again so this is first of all not a medical claim that's how roman describes it right and now we okay. we go in to actually scientifically um, prove it basically but the first thing is that okay he sees it and then suddenly all these people come up saying wow you know I, I don't have the fatigue anymore and and all of that so it's is it placebo though are these people who knew that it was supposed to do that or no okay no, so no because we we neither made those claims nor so we were surprised ourselves okay you know, got it so there was no expectations yeah there. no but let, let me push back a little bit though okay the high vibration so this is the energy cube it's relatively heavy right okay i am an engineer by training i don't see a power supply <laughs> Okay, it doesn't have to be a power supply. This could be an antenna that's picking up, you know, whatever um, magnetic stuff is happening. Same way RFID things work without a power supply. Vibrations. Which vibrations are we talking about? Vibrations. Which vibrations are we talking about? So, um, have you ever send love to someone? Uh, absolutely. Did you, did you plug your hand uh, into an outlet? No. So that's oh, I thought a, you meant like, like sending flowers because it's so much easier than actually doing <laughs> it with your heart. But okay, I, I got it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so okay. and and uh, yeah, have you have you gone into a room? And I'm I know you have. I'm um, just for the listeners maybe into a room or a restaurant and and there's you know, multiple tables and this one table, there's this very strange energy and it's something you're like, oh no, I'd better stay away from that. And there's another table where it's such this welcoming energy. Okay, so we all know that all this exists. No, you have to pause for a second here. Okay, so yes, what you just said is true. And it's so obvious because you've been practicing this stuff for 20 years that you can use that as an example. But for our listeners, there are many people who go, I walk into a restaurant and either it has like good lighting or it's noisy or it's not, and I sit down, right? So it takes an advanced awareness and perception to be able to sit down. And as this is actually a teaching from uh, Dr. Dr. Barry Morgulon, um, who's a very high level energy worker who's been on the show. In fact, he's gonna be backstage and on stage at the conference here um, doing energy work for me. He does the same thing for Tony Robbins and. Uh, in fact, John Amaral, who also does it for Tony, will be here as well doing something similar. So, you know, he, he's got the ability, and he was teaching last weekend. He, he, he said, actually, what you do is you look around the object that you're looking at because that's where all the information is. So we had this long conversation about how to do exactly what you're teaching. But it's an advanced thing. Like, to use this as an example, right. I, I will tell you guys, if you're listening, if you go to dinner with a grandmaster of a tradition or someone who spent 20 years or someone who has psychic powers, and you walk into a restaurant, and they say, go sit there, just go sit there, okay? And it's gonna be a better meal. And why? I don't know, tell me why, do you know? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't either, <laughs> but I guess I have to do some more work. But the, there are people who can actually do that. And you pick a space and you do it consciously. And then there are people who can make a space sacred. And like oh, the shamanic that, yeah, stuff, I, mean, you know I know how, how that, that works. Yeah, I know how, no, that. Yeah, yeah. I know how yeah. that works. And that's a similar, similar way, so I mean, what we've been able to do basically is, so this is by the way, the actual technology that we're using to make our products, okay. which we don't keep for ourselves in the drawer and, and not give it away. We thought, okay, it's time to decentralize that in okay. a way. So we've been able to concentrate this pure quantum energy in these plates and align them in a way where a very, very high concentrated field is actually not only a field, it's a multidimensional quantum energy space is created inside here. And the, the fun thing is that some people you won't be able to explain to how this observation works mm -hmm. and not everybody can feel it, but that's why we do the testing. And everybody can do these tests, for example, like I've brought some pictures here of dark field microscopy tests because those are pretty visual and you can relatively quickly see yeah. if something does something and it's a real physical result. So if you put, if you leave your hand in there in just a, just a couple of minutes, uh, you'll see already a difference and improvement in your blood. And certainly okay. depends on how 
sick or healthy and conscious a person is to begin with, right? There's certainly differences. So when you say an improvement, uh, let me do a quick intro to dark field microscopy for our audience. Some may know about this. There have been attempts to discredit this since it was invented, what, in the 60s or 70s? Um, but there's valid information here. And the idea is, what if you looked at all the stuff floating around in live blood on a slide and saw the characteristics of that? Is there information in it? And the answer is yes, there is. And it's primarily, well, do you see stuff that's not blood in there and what's it doing crawling around? <laughs> that would be one thing. The other one would be, do you see stuff not crawling around that looks like toxins or a variety of things? And the other one is how stuck together is the blood? And since you know, because you listen to the show, food plus oxygen equals electricity. If you can't get oxygen because your blood's all sticky, that might be a problem. Uh, so there, is that a good example of, of this? So if your blood gets less sticky or the critters stop moving or go away, maybe something happens. Yes, okay. exactly. So t what's very typical, um, there's a lot of things you can see in these pictures, but the so-called money rolls is something yeah, that, is, uh, that is really uh, very noticeable. So this would be one, um, one patient here. This was a doctor's office actually in Austria that, that did these. Um, and you see those money rolls basically like the little the, the coins. Stacked up, stacked up uh, red blood cells. Yeah, and so what, what, what that basically tells you is a higher risk uh, for heart attack, stroke, heart disease. It's, it's not a healthy picture of blood, frankly. And then so that person had the other one, the, the quantum block actually the in this case, this the one. smaller version of this was not as powerful as this, so it works a little longer. After already five minutes just placing the hands in there, it looked like this. Okay, this is totally different. This is how healthy blood looks because I'm not an expert in this, but I've done it enough times to be conversant. Yeah. So that's almost instant, basically. So you said this was a minute or two? F five minutes. Five minutes of their hand in, like yeah. mine. Now, I don't know if I would feel a difference from that. I mean, if I, if I tune in and I do my best to get placebo out of there, which is pretty hard to do in a case like this, you know, it feels good, but it's also cool, right? The guy, I, I don't know that I can say I perceive a difference, but we have bright lights middle of an interview, and if I was to go tune in and you know do an A-B test, I'd probably feel it, but I, I can't say right now. I just got a zap of insight and you know, God's talking to me. Uh, well, maybe he is, but not any differently than before. I'm not saying is or isn't, guys, in case you're wondering there. I'm sure I offended half of people with either it is or it isn't, so there you go. Since you get to take this home here, so when you meditate next time, um, just Put your hand or your feet in there, or whatever body part, okay. and just uh, you know any see, body part. Yeah, and so you don't have to. So it's it's <laughs> it's hard to <laughs> observe the physical changes, right? Obviously, when the blood changes, how okay. can we feel that? You may feel a little bit more energetic, or you feel. So some people can feel the physical okay. really, but that's a hard thing to do. But if if people meditate, you know, you can say. Uh, you went deeper and more quicker, possibly. So why, why isn't this big enough to put on your head? I'm not even kidding. Like, wouldn't you want to do your whole brain on this thing? You, you people actually do that. Uh, I, I, I can't fit my head. You're gonna in have there to make either. a bigger one. So we're customizing one right now because there's a there's a large a juice bar uh, that has about ten juice bars, and they mm -hmm. ordered customized versions so that they can put five big smoothies in at the same time and charge them for the customers. So oh, they wow. get a uh, 12 by 12 by 12 inch one, and then yeah, you can definitely put your head in there. <laughs> okay, that that's cool. All right, I, I, I want a, a Leela <laughs> a Leela Q Tech hat. <laughs> this this is too way too heavy for that. All right, I've got to ask though. Okay, you talked about how you're sort of taking the technology out of labs, not just hiding it. All right, I see. I mean, I, it's not really a capacitor. Like if you had layers of metal that were insulated from each other, but there's metal connecting them. So this isn't a capacitor sort of thing going on. This isn't like a Raiders of the Lost Ark kind of tech. Um, people think the Ark of the Covenant was probably a big capacitor from the descriptions of how it was, uh, it was manufactured in multiple layers of wood with insulating resin between them. Or not wood, of metals with resin between them. Or wood, whatever the heck it was. So like a, a Reich or an Orgone technology kind of thing from Wil Wilhelm Reich. Is this of that lineage, the Wilhelm Reich stuff? Is this Rife frequency based? No, it has nothing it? to do with Rife frequency. Rife frequency is a, is, a, is a real physical frequency, how yeah. I would call it. It's also something that you wouldn't really want to use um, on a regular basis um, a lot. On a regular basis in a way, yes, but you wouldn't do that the whole day, for example. You no, couldn't, that would, it that would, would be terrible. You. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the but, same with sound frequencies, actually. Yeah. You would never work with sound frequency unless you want to hurt yourself. 
constantly. So you want to target that. This is something you can constantly have because what it does right now is it you have your blueprint of, of your complete self, basically, whether that's energetically or physically. And this reminds you right now of that blueprint and it helps you to basically integrate that and get more into your own completeness. And that's 100% exactly what it does. And if people- <laughs> well, We have to unpack that sentence. Yeah, exactly. Because I gotta, I gotta admit, you set off my bullshit filter three times with that sentence, right? And that doesn't mean it's bullshit, but it means that when I hear the words, that as my brain's trying to process them, I'm going, wait, hold on, I, I don't get it, right? And I'm open to all this stuff, and, and if I didn't think there was something going on here, I wouldn't have you on the show, right? So uh, walk me through what kind of what you're explaining there, but do it a little bit slower yep. so that I can I can fully absorb that, and I think it's gonna help our audience too, yep. right? And it seems obvious to you because you work with us every day and because you spend a lot of time meditating and because you can see energy fields. By the way, I don't see energy fields unless I'm in very altered states from neurofeedback or I'm taking drugs. Yeah. Right, and I don't really take drugs lately. That's just, I haven't been called to do that, so. <laughs> yeah, it's a great question. And I'm actually glad you're asking that because indeed it's, it's some, and I, I know of course that there's so many people out there that have a hard time to understand this. Still, I wanna mention that sentence because in essence, that's really what it does. Now we need to break it down sure. in, in, in pieces and bites for people with these studies and say, oh, okay, so if you put your hand in there, this is what's gonna happen to the blood. Uh, if you put your knee in there, this is what's gonna happen. Or if you put your plants in there, for example, or you put it just close to your plants, they grow twice as fast. This you know, plant was only four inches tall when we started the show, if you guys rewind <laughs> it. So, so those are very, very tangible things, but all comes back to this very essence that it supports the, the expression basically of your ideal self and that's physically and energetically. So physically that, so we're, we're bombarded with bad air, bad food, Wi-Fi soups, et cetera, right? It's all something that doesn't support us on that level. It actually is something, it's one more hurdle, one more challenge for us to physically be in optimal state and also energetically be in optimal state, right? It, it basically confuses our system constantly. Um, so, and, and this is, this does the opposite of it. It neutralizes these harmful or potentially harmful frequencies and supports us in, in this original, you know, working towards this original blueprint, right? And yeah, there are lots of different concepts of how this body gets created and all of that, but there's still this blueprint and who manufactured that that body there that's within you so that's that's the strength and that's the connection and if that gets all forgotten and you start to just take in bad water bad food and all of that you start to deteriorate it, it weakens the system right yeah exactly okay. and, and that's basically in essence what it sort of neutralizes and, and reverses and supports the whole system really holistically um, with that. And, and you can have pretty instant results with it, but you can also have results that just take some time because you need to work through things because not everybody's the same, right? And that's also just a misunderstanding of the modern science that you know, everybody is exactly the same and I prescribe this one thing and then that, it always does that. that. That's false. Everyone's exactly the same. <laughs> that's why everyone should be forced to take exactly the same medical treatments because we're all the same. I, I totally support what you're saying. So I'm, I'm glad we could straighten that out. <laughs> yeah, so in, in essence, so that's, that's really the essence and then we need to try to break it down for people. Okay, so what, what can you do with it? And so one thing is you just have it sitting at home and then basically provides this energy field for your whole home. Actually, this, this actually would have a radius, visible radius of up to a kilometer. I was gonna ask how big of a radius. So up to a kilometer? This one, the small one uh, that you know, the yeah. quantum block has about 145 feet radius. Okay. So it covers like a normal home. This one really would cover a whole farm wow. um, pretty much. Whereas I happen to have a farm. Hmm. All right. So, but, so the EMF uh, harmonization and neutralization that we've been, we've proven multiple times with multiple studies. Well, but it doesn't actually neutralize EMF. Wi-Fi still works. I mean, I, I yeah. could get a signal on my phone. So 
what does neutralization mean the way you're using it? Because yep. I know, but explain that for listeners because that doesn't sound credible if you're going to neutralize a thing, but it still works. Yeah, uh, exactly. So there's a difference between actually blocking EMF, neutralizing slash harmonizing EMF. So okay. we have some products like our clothing line that actually blocks Where, Where's EMF. that hat you gave me? Um, oh, is that? It's it actually is. here. All right, so this is the hat. And so what's going on with this? So there's a high uh, purity silver fabric inside uh, that also we have a t-shirt and some other products where we use that silver fabric and it physically blocks the EMF. So you could take an EMF meter, <laughs> awesome, <Big> <laughs> <head>. <laughs> take an EMF meter and you can, you can uh, literally measure uh, the difference, right? It's, it's, it's really blocking the signal. Uh -huh. Now, it wouldn't be so helpful if you want to work at home and you, know, you, have, you want to receive phone calls and do your work uh, to, to block that off, right? It's, uh, it's also not necessary, frankly, because what's possible with this device is that, um, or also with a capsule that you could wear, it harmonizes and neutralizes the, um, the radiation in a way that it's not harmful to your physical and energetic body anymore. And it can be measured okay. uh, and tested and studied. And, and, and so we've done that. So you would still have all the signals which you want, but it doesn't affect you in any negative way. So that's kind of a nice thing and it can do that. So this, not in the whole kilometer, but up to about, we measured it 400, 500 meters and the outside other 500 meters, there's still something, but it, it just, helps with just a few percentages of that, yeah. So does it drop off at the cube of the distance the same way as EMFs do? Like the signal strength? Yeah, so it's really, this is um, up to a kilometer and okay. the strong field is about 400, 500 meter and you could... So it's more linear, it's not like a uh, cube exponential. Yeah, function. it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's, I mean, we, ha we even haven't figured out the com complete reason to why that works because we have we have developed the ultimate package of this basically where you can if you get two of these you can endlessly upgrade the concentration of this. Would you stack them on top of each other or something? No, you would basically charge one in the other and then the one you just charged is seven times more powerful than the one before. Yeah. And and so on and so on and First we thought when we were experimenting with it, okay, so when we have the next generation, the second and the third generation, if the first is already a kilometer, well, you know, where's the second gonna be? But it was, the second was also at a kilometer. So you basically build a bigger one around this and then a bigger but one But it was that. more concentrated. Oh, wow. Years ago, I was at a place that I'm hoping is still open. I heard they were having trouble, called Red Rock Coffee in uh, Mountain View, California. So when I still worked in tech and I had just started talking about anti-aging uh, and some of the things that I was working on. And this guy who was two generations of technologists ahead of me, you know, an older guy already, I was probably early 30s, late 20s. And he said, I want to show you some stuff. And he was really excited. He said, I hold the patent for 802.11b, the first wireless technology ever. So I'm the guy who invented it. Uh, and if you go back in Silicon Valley, you look at the real history of Silicon Valley, the whole place exists not because there's a university there or something. It exists because billions of dollars in 1940s dollars went into radar and signal development <laughs> in a secret project in, in the Bay Area. And all those people went on to start Fairchild Semiconductor and all those things. So these are military trained specialists. So anyway, this is that lineage that's been going down. And he said, look at this. And he turns his laptop around and there's a diagram of a human and it's got the chakra points all illustrated. And he said, I said, oh great, you know, picture of chakras, I do yoga too. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, no. This is what happens when I take the million dollar test equipment for signal strength analysis that we use to, to optimize our Wi-Fi antennas, and I turned it around and I looked at the human body. And he said, I'll be damned if there's not data in there that you could use for a diagnosis. Right, so this is a hardcore, grizzled, what we would call gray beards in Silicon Valley. I don't know if that's politically correct, but these are basically engineers who know their shit, right? And they can walk into a room full of young engineers and they can snap their fingers and solve the problem and no one knows how they did it. One of those guys, like the wizards. And he's saying, you know, I've been doing hard, you know, chip level stuff, but there's something here. And that was intriguing. And then you get the work of the HeartMath Institute, 
where they talk about you know, heart rate variability, coherence between uh, multiple people and animals, and, and it's provable stuff. Like, so like, you're familiar with all this stuff. I'm mostly sharing this with uh, the audience to say that there's something going on. But if Wi-Fi can be harmful, and we emit a Wi-Fi signal, and we can also use EMFs for healing, which we can, there's nothing that says you can't modify EMFs, including Wi-Fi and cell phone signals, to be good for humans, or at least neutral for humans. You're listening to The Human Upgrade with Dave Asprey. There's nothing that says you can't modify EMFs, including Wi-Fi and cell phone signals, to be good for humans, or at least neutral for humans. So we've done actually multiple studies on that. I think we have about three studies that were done okay. by, by, by the Besa Institute. Then the EGF Institute <coughs> not only tested the blocking effects of the clothing, but they also tested the actual um, harmonization aspect with the heart rate variability study. So that you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. And for people that don't know that, the heart rate variability is directly linked to the autonomic nervous system. And yeah, you can measure that. So you can measure someone just as is, and then you can blast them with EMF. And actually, we've done tests with all kinds of EMF, right? In all kinds of situations. We even had the Institute go um, get an electric car, and then they put the people inside, gave them a laptop, um, um, <laughs> iPad, iPhone, <laughs> and, and all, all of it, right? Really, just to see, okay, what happens, right? And then so then you test these people again, and then you introduce the product, and then you can test again. That's pretty much how it works. And the heart rate variability was also done in a little bit longer period, so they tested the immediate effects and then the, the near-term effects. So yeah, we've, we've done that uh, pretty extensively, actually. So EMF is probably the most testing we've done because it's yeah. Frequency-wise, I mean, there's so many potentially harmful frequencies out there, but EMF is the one that most people are familiar with, and um, that's why we also focused on it, because it's a concern for people. I must say, though, that um, EMFs are not bad for everybody, so not 100% of the people are uh, impacted, and what I know to be true is that if you're super healthy and you're very connected and tuned in with yourselves, means you have unlocked already quite some of your consciousness, EMF doesn't bother you an inch at all. Okay. None of our healers is impacted. They could sleep underneath a tower and it wouldn't matter. But the problem is that 99% of the people yeah. don't have that ability or capability. So they need tools in order to kind of, you know, bridge that gap, if you will. Even if you're one of those people though, you don't. You wouldn't want to do it because yeah. it's just also a bad view when you wake up, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Just look at those those, those big metal things, but it, it's not good for you. But it's trivial, and but you take someone like that and you give them some mercury, some lead, some nickel, and magically they will be less resilient, and then the impact of EMFs on them would be higher. True, or or I guess. Well, yeah. Are, it, it, I think it depends on the person. If you if point. you took Roman, probably he would. It would still not matter. Yeah. Um, there, up to a, degree, dig, a degree, probably. Yeah. There are some people who have you know, superpowers that are hard to believe in. I, you know, I've seen some of their brain waves and some of their abilities, and I, I study with some of those guys because you're saying that ought not to be possible, but I've seen it over and over. Shomei did that, right? Now, one thing that keeps happening, and this is interesting, uh, I'm using a wireless mic, and as soon as I put this thing on my arm, my wireless mic is right here, about you know, a foot away from it, it's shut off twice. Okay, as a, a brand new battery pack, and I've been using it all day reliably. So, do you see this happen? People using wireless gear really near a device that shuts off? Not usually. No, okay. haven't been reported. If if that keeps being reported, okay. we'll follow it further. But okay, <laughs> uh, well, I was just wondering because that's odd, and it it's strange because you say, well, those are independent. I know two different really high level energy healers, like people who've written great books or are grandmasters. And I'm not naming either of them because I don't know if they'd want me to name them. Um, but both people I know and trust well, um, you know, been to their houses kind of people. And both of them know that they can't use wireless microphones and their teams all know that. 
their audio video experts have given up on it and they have wired microphones because these people have enough power in them that they will break wireless gear reliably. Uh, one of them, I was a very dear friend, you know, spent Christmas at my house with me, uh, has a stack of cell phones because he burns them out, right? <laughs> <laughs> so there are such people. Uh, do you know anyone like that? Uh, yes, I mean, but not to the degree that they would burn the uh, the cell phones, but frankly, they would make sure that they don't burn the cell phone because they wouldn't want to burn it. Yeah. Um, but they have, they would have that ability, yeah. Yeah, well, this isn't a, like an unconscious thing. It's sort of, you know, you have three of them because one of them will mysteriously stop working unless you're really dialed in. Like, all right, give me the next one. But that's that's how one of the guys deals with it. And it's it's one of those things where I'd say, this isn't possible. I mean, heck, you work for T-Mobile, right? Like, this isn't supposed to happen, but it does. It just doesn't happen in a great percentage of people. Um, what's up with the, the signal or the picture? Is that like a sacred geometry or is that your Leela corporate logo? Well, it's it's kind of both because with every frequency and also these uh, these blocks, we've come up with mandala specifically to accompany the energy. And uh, so you, for example, here, this is a... These are the little cards you put in your pocket? Yeah, and so this is the DNA and cell protector card, for example. And so once the frequency is created, we go in and work with someone who's who's a clairvoyant and she can, that's, she's an artist too, and all, almost all she does is she creates mandalas and um, specific art related to certain frequencies and energies. And so we ask her, so for this specific frequency, can you please create a mandala? Um, because we want it to match, to look nice and beautiful and to match the energy of the frequency. And uh, that's pretty much the same with this as well. All right, guys, that was the third time my mic pack turned off. So if that doesn't normally turn off mic packs, it's because it amplified my power that I am now a remote control for reality. <laughs> Does that happen a lot? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, my ego is smaller than yours, in case you're wondering. <laughs> yeah, we, we haven't gotten those reports before, but that it increases your power for sure it does, but power in a different way than people think of, not the electrical power but really um, your, your true power certainly okay. got uh, a, a little boost. That you have that anyway, always, right? We always have that. That's the one thing that people, a lot of people don't understand. It's like, okay, so I, I need to get this power. No, you always have that. It's just a matter of unlocking the access to it. Right. And you always have that full consciousness available. It's just a matter of unlocking that. And that's basically the process. Uh, so that helps with unlocking that. Okay. Do you ever worry about making a Darth Vader? Some, uh, no, people, are, all. Um, some people are dicks. Yeah. And you unlock their full power, and they're a bigger dick. So, so here's the thing. So um, this device cannot be used for any negative or manipulative purposes. Okay. So, it, so it's hard to categorize into negative and positive because there isn't really such thing. On one level, there is, but uh, there's because you can do something negative and something positive comes out, right? Or you can do something positive and can still have a negative effect. So it basically separates between harmful, harmful for consciousness, harmful for a physiological organism and life supportive. And everything that's life and consciousness supportive gets boosted and supported, if you will, and everything that's harmful or potentially harmful for consciousness and the physiological system gets neutralized. And that's also one of the things that um, on stage will we'll show an allergy test. Um, we actually literally, we also, we knew it, it, it helps to neutralize also those um, quote unquote negative frequencies. Neutralize, uh, neutralize, for example, if you're allergic to shrimps, we had this person that reported over and over again that he had such he, he cannot eat shrimps or anything like that. And he has certain other allergies as well. Then he, he I, I don't know why he did that, but he, he put the stuff in the, in the block for five minutes and then uh, ate those and had no allergy whatsoever. Now we've, I wouldn't recommend that if you're anaphylactic, guys. Please that, don't. That sounds, <laughs> that sounds a little risky. That's still uh, something uh, to be further explored, but it, it does have these physical, okay. physical effects. And to, so you couldn't. So you can copy frequencies with this, right? 
any frequency that exists. You could put a vitamin C pill in here or a leaf of a healing plant and put it in there with a glass of water or with a piece of metal or whatever you want and within seconds that frequency is 100% copied over. Into the water. Into the water, for, as an example. I mean, yeah. water is really easy to actually absorb frequencies. You can drink yeah. it. Then. But couldn't you take poison ivy in water and do something bad with it? So that's the thing. So you, you could do that, but the, whatever is harmful for, um, for your body then as a reaction based on the poison ivy frequencies would get neutralized. So you would only basically, after that, have something like almost like a clean product that I don't know if poison ivy would have anything positive for you, but let's say it did. Kind of then, homeopathic something. I yeah, don't know. Uh, and then those negative effects would basically be neutralized. That's pretty much what it does with herbicides and pesticides as well. And we've gotten it so far to actually have that studied and tested. But now this is a whole new level that Ian Mitchell, for example, has been doing these um, allergy tests and actually trying to, with, with the normal allergy test that you would do at a doctor's, you know, you, you know. The skin prick, yeah. Exactly. And then you would see all the red and swelling, you know, when you're allergic. And then you take the same substance after it was in there for a few minutes and it doesn't do that. Okay, so, yeah. Uh, there is indeed physical evidence uh, across the board, and we're just scratching the surface, to be honest, um, as far as that goes. But uh, you couldn't, you couldn't copy a fear frequency or something like that, for example. Okay. And that's just because of it just the intention, through. the intention that you guys put into it, or the spacing it's, of the plates. Like I, I'm still trying to figure out. Like uh, I don't know if that goes too far for for some of the listeners. It's basically because of the consciousness field. Yeah, it's just so. So I. I learned, geez, years and years ago, I took a class. Um, it was a class about how to leave your body, right? Which is a known energetic technique. Like there's lots of ways to teach it. And it was from a Portuguese guy, and I'm forgetting his name right now, um, who had taught like hundreds of people how to do this and said, all right, why don't you guys all go out in astral travel and come back and tell me what you see and then we'll make a map, right? And it, it was, Fascinating stuff, and I did learn how to you know leave my body consciously and all that kind of stuff. It was it was just a super cool weekend, uh, and this is like twenty years ago. Uh, one of the things that they taught though was how to what we talked about like how to look around uh, in a room and how there is an energy in a room. You know, if you're going to live in an old church, you might want to clean some of the garbage out and all the movies about oh you know you're uh, you're living in a house on a pet cemetery. Uh, you know, there, there are, you know, even a, a room in an old building where there was a, a cross on a wall and someone prayed to it every day. There's, there's something left and you can take three people, don't know anything about it and go, that wall's different, right? So yeah, there's, there is an intent. And, and frankly, um, when I worked uh, for Bulletproof and had uh, a relationship with them, the intent of what I do was in the products, right? And now that uh, that relationship has changed, it's not in there anymore, right? It's in my new stuff. And we make our intent go into things, and energetically powerful people probably are better at that. I don't have data that says that, but I just see it. So you're saying you and all the energy people you work with, when you're manufacturing these, I mean, are you playing sacred music? Are you meditating? Are you sending lasers out of your foreheads? Like, how does that actually work? No, we're doing none of these things, frankly, because the the most important when you create that is that that you're fully there and and present with with your full consciousness. So if, uh, and, and by the way, even though I probably could create a frequency, I'm really, I don't consider myself to be that advanced that I would create these frequencies um, and release them to the public, right? That's why we work with really the, the best of the best, like a Roman, for example. And Roman doesn't need to do any yoga meditation or anything ever because he's just always instantly in that state and you can, I mean, there are days where maybe he's worked for 12 hours a day helping people that he says, today, you know, I, I just can't do it. I'm just, I'm just too exhausted. I don't want to just move even more energy. But that's, you know, he would just say that. Um, otherwise, he's always constantly there and makes sure we get the 100% right frequency, for example, in the product. And I'm there helping to facilitate. And then we use the technology to you know, press it into these cars and duplicate it and all so of that. So he's designing the energy and you're somehow capturing it and then you're pressing it into what the coating on here is. It's in the coating, it's in the metal. 
Yeah, so with, with the frequency, for example, it's pretty much imprinting. So what this does is anything you put in here, yeah. you imprint pure quantum energy into that object. I, I mean, when you're making the thing itself, like are you imprinting it, you know, you talked about imprinting from Roland. So, so like, I guess what I'm... Oh, th so that, that's the, 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 the first charging of this is a proprietary um, process that we yeah. can't share how that actually works. Is it works, done with but technology or with human beings is what I'm saying? <laughs> it's proprietary. Yeah, I wouldn't even Didn't tell us. Oh, already? so <laughs> there's a fire circle and there's leprechauns. I gotcha. Yeah, there, there are different ways actually in how, okay. to, how, to, how to achieve this. Um, and then it took us a, a very long time to figure it out exactly how to get this power if you will in there and that it mm -hmm. that it doesn't stop vibrating in this way but then making these frequencies so when the frequency is created and then it needs to be pressed into into a card you could do that at home also right so if you wanted to let's say there's a um you know sp special nutritional mix that you like to take for example you could put that inside and create a card for yourself uh, with that nutritional mix in here and what then actually happens is we have two groups of people one group is that they actually can completely reduce the nutrition that they're taking it's very fascinating and interesting i don't recommend people do that so um, they, they take a vitamin c and some water they put it in or in a card like one of these cards? and then they use the card and then they have the frequency of the vitamin c we have a whole bio base um card actually that in, in, in this heel capsules that frequency is included it's about 78 different minerals the, and vitamins the, the heel capsules are in those little little pellets that go inside the necklace yeah you're wearing one yeah. my daughter stole mine you, you guys sent me one and as soon as she saw she's like i really like this what and she just grabbed it and stole it so uh yeah okay <laughs> cool. so, so what's in, there, there's one. five purple little uh like medical grade titanium beads in there Exactly. What is on those five beads? Like, what, what are the imprints? That's with? just pure quantum energy and All basically helps to boost out the frequencies okay. even further so that your whole uh, system can leverage it. Uh, but, but anyway, so that those vitamins and minerals, you can leverage them on a frequency basis. And again, some people don't need the physical substance then anymore. And then other people, for them, it's like that the physical substance, when they take it, has a much greater effect than before. It's almost as if the bioavailability increases uh, of that because you have that frequency as well. So it's, it's, it's pretty fascinating actually. So you can do these things on your own and that's pretty much how we do it as well. Just that, you know, there's molecular frequencies, how I would call this bio-base mix, for example, or if you took, you know, um, a healing plan would copy that into something else. And then there's etheric frequencies. So with okay. those two, you can do a whole lot of things. You can use sound frequencies also and, and copy them if, if you wanted to. But How would you put a sound frequency in a device like this? Yeah, I mean, that's uh, a little bit more complicated, but you could basically capture the sound with a glass of water. Okay. Um, and then from there, you could uh, copy it into another object. You could take a whole Mozart piece if you want, basically, and uh, have that frequency in there. It sounds crazy, but it's it's absolutely easily possible. When, one of the guests who's been on the show, um, who I really appreciate is Stan Groff. And Stan Groff is a researcher from Czechoslovakia. And I say that because that was the name of the country when he was there. It's currently the Czech Republic or Czecho as they renamed it, but no one uses. And Stan gave 3000 patients LSD clinically as a psychiatrist. And over the course of 40 years, invented the field along with his wife um, of transpersonal psychology. So a lot of the stuff that you've studied falls under the rubric of, of uh, what Stan did. Uh, and when LSD became illegal, he brought out holotropic breathwork. And holotropic breathwork is something that uh, you've seen James Nestor has talked about on the show. But Stan came on, he was 94. I think he's probably 97, 98, 99. I did an event with him where we did his breathing for a lot of people in what would now be called the Upgrade Collective, um, my, my mentorship group. His probably most famous book that was called The Holotropic Universe. You familiar with it? No, I've not read that book. Okay. The supposition there is that everything in the universe is a, a hologram. And the interesting thing about holograms is that you can take a hologram and break it in half, and each half of a hologram contains a picture of the entire thing. So if it's a hologram of me, you break it in half, you got two of me, you break it in half, you got two, et cetera, et cetera. And you lose a little bit of fidelity with each one. 
But the whole point there is that the universe is probably made out of a whole bunch of little hologram bubbles. Um, Nassim Haramin has been on the show as well, who's a theoretical physicist uh, who does something called the Resonance Academy. Have you seen his work? I've, I've heard You've of probably him. probably yes. come across him somewhere yes. or another because similar realms. And the reason I'm bringing all this stuff up is, is when you're saying this kind of amplifies your signal, makes you more of what you are. If any of these theories <laughs> has uh, relevance or accuracy or they're just good working models, those provide evidence points that possibly something can be going on with this. But the fact that you're warning me, don't overdo it, uh, I, I will just say flat out, based on everything that I know, you can manipulate frequencies in the human body. Humans can do it to other humans if the humans are trained or just naturally gifted. Um, different places on earth can do it to you. Different electrical devices can do it to you. We've had the biocharger people come on talking about that uh, with um, right frequencies basically and a bunch of other stuff. Um, we've got your tech, the Leela Q tech. I don't think I've had anyone come on with crystal healing, but I don't know enough shamans and crystal healers. Uh, and I use some in meditation and they work, right? So all this stuff is out there. I feel comfortable saying something useful is happening, but I don't feel comfortable saying that we know how or why. How far along the how and why frequency are you? Like, like how, how much do you think we know compared to what we would want to know about this? Yeah, so I think it's a good point because science is playing catch up with these things. And Ian Mitchell brought up a good example the other day. He said, you know, hey, if you went into the 1600s and you gave someone a smartphone from today, it would work for them, you know, and you could show them all these different things and they'd you burn you with, with a stick. But they couldn't. <laughs> they now I asked him uh, to explain, you know, what this is and how it works. And they couldn't do it because they simply wouldn't have the words for it, right? Right. Um, so it's, it's similar with this that I think to scientifically explain how it works, it, it takes time. So we are starting to be able to explain certain of these processes, but by far not everything. We can we can scientifically prove what it does. That's relatively easy and, and, and you've validate done several that. Studies. Yeah. But uh, but the actual process, you know, we can describe it in the in the way that I've described it. And yeah, Ian Mitchell is actually working on a on a science paper right now, which goes a little bit more into scientific depth about um, how it works because you know, if you see these results over and over again, and it's not like that we've done like one test, like it's, it's, it's almost incredible all these different studies that have been done and, and all with 100% um, um, results. It, it's not just like, you know, there's maybe 10% here or 10% there, or there's just nine people affected out of 100. No, it's, we're, t we're talking, it, 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 it works the whole time. And now we, we try to actually go more into the science, but science is really playing catch up because these are some things that are, they're hard for science, frankly. Well, if in order to believe that a certain thing is possible, you have to say, it looks like 20 years of my career, I've been wrong, right? Even if you've been mostly right and you had a good model, right? But sometimes you're saying, admitting that is, it's too big of a failure and people just, that they're unwilling to do it. That's why we have so much dogma in science. And then you get the, the funding problems, especially in medical science right now, where if you say that, they cancel you and take away your funding, right? Even though what you're saying might be true. Agree, and, and, and that aside, you know, it, it needs, the world needs more scientists like, like Ian Mitchell that are truly open-minded and that have this curiosity of, hey, if there's something I don't understand, that's what, we're now four, let's, let's figure it out, let's explore this, right? Yeah. And not, okay, well, I don't wanna deal with it, you know, it just, it's above my horizon, I just stay in my little box, which we find in a lot of, of modern science today, unfortunately. What, what was that first step of the scientific method? Uh, observe, whoa, what if we observed things instead of only observe things we believe are possible? Right, because there's a lot of cool stuff going on, and it sounds like you just got there from you know, corporate America, uh, working for uh, you know VP level at publicly traded companies. Kind of boring, at least it, it got there for me. Uh, and then you said, All right, "I'm going to do the personal work," and suddenly here you are making you know, Lila Q Tech things. I'm curious to play around with this. I'll have it in my room tonight before the conference. So if I can levitate on stage, uh, you can take credit for it. All right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Right. But that is one of the things, you know, why I left the corporate world at some point, because, 
you know, at, at some point you realize, okay, you know, this, like you said initially, some of these things you, you don't really talk about, you can't be your full self um, in, in that world. And yeah, so that's, uh, it's good to have that experience though, it, I think. It, it, it is for two reasons. One is it, it makes you a little bit more credible if you just said, well, my parents raised me without clothing in the wild until I was 20. Uh, okay, that's an interesting story. <laughs> Right, but it, it's sort of like you don't know what it's like to be normal. It is what happens uh, it, when people are too out there. And you're saying, no, I, I did all that and I did this. And that makes the possibility for other people, oh, maybe I could do it too. Yeah. And it's the same thing, losing 100 pounds and you're getting over Lyme disease like your wife had. Like I, well, they said, I, I still think Lyme is toxic mold, but that's a whole different conversation. Uh, but um, that, that whole, you know, you can get over it, you can do something. And so I think it's really helpful that you live that life because uh, it lets you run a company effectively, but it more importantly just says you're normal and you do this versus if you're just, I've never been normal. Uh, I, I think it loses credibility. So we need more people who've done the corporate America boring, you know, picket fence thing and said, I tried it. I needed something else. All right. So thank you for stepping up and being willing to do that. All right, guys, as you know, Anytime someone comes on the show who makes cool stuff, I'm like, you got to give our listeners, our community, a discount. So Philip was kind enough to do that. LeelaQ.com, L-E-E-L-A-Q.com. Use code DAVE10, and they'll give you 10% off everything on the site. And there's there's definitely something going on. I don't know why it keeps turning off my microphone, but it's not the batteries we checked. Um, and maybe it wasn't the tech you say it doesn't normally do that. It was something weird going on. And I'm feeling a little bit different from this. Uh, kind of a little bit more caffeinated than before. And uh, I'll try out the hat as well. I can't say whether it works or not, but I understand silver, I understand how that works. But you've put quantum energy with intent. Yeah, and it's been there. certified actually. So it's a really fully certified product. Can I charge the hat inside the, the energy cube? I mean, if I do this, is the hat going to gain superpowers? Um, it has that already because we've oh. done that for you, but okay. that's what you could do, yes. And if you have other silver clothing, for example, uh -huh. then uh, you can certainly charge it in there. Yeah, what absolutely. About, like, Put your phone in there, for example. Really? What does it do to phones? Well, I don't want to say that you then have a healing device in your pocket, but well, uh, it say. does change uh, the impact that the phone has on your physiological system. So. All right. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I want to see a study on that. But in the meantime, let's see. If I leave my phone in there for five minutes, what could I possibly lose? Five minutes of scrolling through Facebook. Oh, no. All right. So there you go. Three minute max for a phone in the infinity block. Really? Three, what happens after three minutes? Um, Every time there's metal involved, no more than three minutes. That's a whole nother uh, discussion on why it it's just so you kind of overcharge it then. It doesn't harm the, the block, it harms the No, device. it doesn't harm the, it also doesn't harm the device. It's just something, there are certain aspects that why you don't want to do it, but it would take a little bit to explain it now mm. and go into some details. We have, it's very simple to use, it's super simple, but the only thing to watch out for is metals just keep okay. the maximum charge times that we mentioned on the website it's an inverted u response curve uh, is that what I'm, we're talking about uh, like with a lot of devices and with light therapy like if you get none it doesn't work very well and then in the middle you, you get a good amount but if you keep going too far you start getting it doesn't it's not harmful but you get less of an effect from it so i imagine it's probably similar to that but whatever it is i won't fry my phone <laughs> that would have been already um enough anyway for the phone. That's a pretty powerful, it works pretty fast. Beautiful. Well, Philip, thanks for being willing to explore the edges of stuff. I still want to know what the heck is going on in here, but uh, uh, in, in, inside there's no chips. What the heck? Uh, but I, I do believe the studies you're doing, and I can tell, you know, you're saying, look, we have people who can see stuff and do stuff, and we learned how to repeat it. There is validity to that approach, and I'm really curious to to experiment more with what you've got going on so thanks for doing something cool thanks for having me really hey guys i got a few more interviews for you that i'm doing here at the biohacking conference and if you're curious about the biohacking conference go to biohackingconference.com we'll probably have the conference proceedings but more than 100 vendors 150,000 square feet and if you thought biohacking was a, a fad it's been around for 10 years now it's a new word in the english language in 2018 and yes my name is there in the online Merriam-Webster's dictionary for it, which is super cool. And it's a growing community. 
with literally millions of people around the world, including Latin America, throughout Asia. Uh, there's Russian biohackers, there's European biohackers. So it's a global movement that says we have control of our own biology. And now is the most important time to remember that, that you must have control of your own biology if you want to change it, you want to upgrade it, you want to improve it, or you just want to manage it effectively. You've got to be the one who makes the decision about which technologies you use and you get to use. Have a wonderful day. See you soon. You're listening to The Human Upgrade with Dave Asprey. 